to D-Labs Tech Tips. In this video, I'm going to show you how to run an accessory VFO standalone with its own power supply so that you can use that VFO on any transmitter you wish. Here we go. So for this demonstration, the power supply is wired to power a Heathkit model VF1 VFO. Okay, so this is the original Octoplug coming off the VFO that would normally plug into the back of your transmitter. So the power supply is now supplying the filament and high voltage to the VFO for operation. There's also RCA jack right here. That's your key line. So when you go into transmit mode, that goes in through the octoplug and says, OK, VFO, it's time to operate. I'm monitoring the high voltage. It's about 213 volts going to the VF1. And if you look over here, you will see the output of the VFO on the scope. A nice clean sine wave. So this will allow you to run your VFO on any transmitter that you wish because all the power supply requirements are taken care of here. All you have to deal with is your key line and your output that goes to your transmitter. Let me show you how this little guy's built. All right, construction of the power supply is really basic. This is a Hammond 7x5x2 aluminum chassis. My main power transformer. I use a choke. My ACN is here. There's my power switch. I have an octal plug for the output. And there is the RCA jack for the key line. We go underside. You can see my IEC power connector feeding the fuse. To the power switch and then we rectify it with a full wave rectifier this is a WL06 about a two dollar component it's one of the little D lab cub rectifier cap boards so we go into a 68 microfarad cap through the choke to a 47 microfarad cap and then out the octoplug to feed the VFO the blue lines is your filament there's the RCA jack that goes to pin 8 for the key up circuit. There will be a bottom cover installed. I left it off for demonstration purposes. One thing I need to quickly discuss is the power supply transformer. This one puts out about 150 volts AC on the secondary and of course it has a 6.3 volts for the tube filament. The voltage regulator in the VFO, in this case it's an OA2, will regulate the screens of the oscillator tube. So this input voltage can vary and it'll have no effect on the VFO's performance. You just don't want to go much below 150 volts because OA2 needs some headroom to regulate. All right, so with this little power supply module, you can now take those VFOs that were simply accessories for transmitters and make them operate standalone, right? Let me cut to the schematic so you guys can see how easy it is to wire this device. You could probably get away without using the choke, but I prefer to use that to stiffen up that power supply. The voltage regulation itself is taking place in the VFO via the OA2 voltage regulator tube. Okay, so let's cut to the schematic now for the Johnson VF122 VFO. You can see that the actual circuitry is identical. You just change the pinout of the 8-pin octal socket for that VFO. So if you guys want a copy of these schematics, just send me an email. I have them ready to go. Enjoy your projects, and let's all enjoy a great 2022. We'll see you again.